Okay, here's the final installation of week six where we move on to heating and cooling. Now, heating and cooling systems begin with ventilation. You need to be able to circulate the air that's in the interior space and replace it with fresh air. There are two types of ventilation, natural ventilation and mechanical ventilation. Natural ventilation, of course, requires a source, most likely an open window, and air will move from higher pressure to lower pressure. Now, typically, natural ventilation will just simply rely on the force of the wind from outside coming into the building. Now, mechanical ventilation can be start with a simple fan, and most HVAC systems will include fans that will draw air from the outside and can also exhaust air to the outside. Bathrooms and kitchens especially have fans to control odors and humidity. Sometimes in the bathroom we have a very loud fan which also provides other benefits. Now for heating and cooling we always try to use natural methods first and then once we've exhausted all of our natural methods we'd have to turn to fuels. Fossil fuels include gas, oil, and coal. Now, natural gas is the second most common heating fuel and burns clean. Odor is added so that leaks can be detected. Gas piping systems are actually fairly simple. Coal is more plentiful than oil or gas, but it does not burn very cleanly and is definitely more cumbersome to use. Coal mining is also very dangerous and destroys the countryside. Elect electrical energy has the lowest installation cost of all the common fuels I just mentioned, but generating electricity is about half as efficient and several times more expensive. Two basic types of heaters are fireplaces and gas burning heaters. Now, fireplaces can contribute to indoor air pollution, so they should be designed to properly carry the smoke and combustion to the outside air. They generate mostly radiant heat, warming only the immediate vicinity, and most of the heat will go out the chimney. Modern wood stoves that use EPA-rated wood pellets are more efficient than real fireplaces. They're mostly used for aesthetic purposes. Now gas heaters you have to be careful with. Unvented gas heaters could create toxic fumes in the interior. Uh, gas logs and gas fireplaces will use natural gas or propane and are mostly decorative rather than utilitarian. They will also create a radiant heat, but you need to make sure that the damper is always open so that it can release the carbon monoxide that it creates. Thermal comfort relies on air and surface temperature. Radiant heating is a more comfortable way to warm people than by introducing heated air into a space, which is a more common method. It can also be more energy efficient because it will transfer heat directly rather than having to pass through the air. Less heat will be lost through the building envelope because the walls are radiantly heated and the air temperature can be cooler to achieve the same level of comfort. So ceilings, floors, and sometimes walls are used as the heated surface. Floors are the most common and while typically heated or chilled water is circulated through pipes in the floor panels. You can also find floors heated by electrical resistance wires or even warm air circulating through ducts. Floor radiant heating panels can be blocked by carpeting so it's important to be careful where you use it. And repairs can also be messy and costly. Now ceilings are generally preferred because they respond quicker and can be hotter than floor systems. They can also be hidden. Now, warm air heat, on the other hand, can create comfortable and uniform heating conditions. Fans will move heated air through a series of ducts that are all located in the walls and between the floors and ceilings. Supply registers are then equipped with dampers that control the airflow. The return air can be part of separate ducts and take cooler air back to be heated and distributed. Filters and air cleaning equipment can be added to clean the air. And these systems can be noisy and circulate dust and other pollutants, but are, again, the most common system out there. So warm air heating systems use furnaces, which is what heats the air. If it was a water system, it would be a boiler. These are usually placed in a central location. Electric furnaces are clean and simple and have fewer problems than fuel furnaces, but again, the cost of electricity makes them more expensive to operate. 
Now, ducts are either round or rectangular and made of either metal or glass fiber. Flexible ducting is used to connect supply air registers to the main ductwork, but these are not allowed in exposed ceilings. Dimensions for ducts or um, are on construction drawings are usually inside dimensions, so the overall size you should add two inches to each dimension shown. Now remember, you care about the size of ducts because that will tell you how much room you have left in the plenum to place your light fixtures. These ducts can be used in concealed or exposed ceilings, and they will conduct noise from one end to the other, so they should also be lined with some sound absorbing material if possible. The damper is a piece of metal that's positioned in the duct to open or close the, the airflow. Air ducts through a fire barrier in a commercial building are required to have fire dampers to prevent the spread of fire and smoke through the system. And access doors are installed near fire dampers for inspection and servicing. Now after the air is either heated by the furnace or cooled by the air conditioning unit and it passes through the ducts and the dampers, it will reach what's called a supply register. The air for heating, cooling, and ventilation is all supplied through registers and uh, diffusers. Now, grills are rectangular openings with fixed horizontal or vertical vanes or louvers through which the air passes. The register is a grill that has a damper directly behind it to control the airflow. Air conditioning refers to the treatment of air so that its temperature, humidity, cleanliness, quality, and motion are maintained as appropriate for the building's occupants. Air conditioning has allowed buildings to become windowless, to have lower ceilings because of the need for less daylight penetration, has encouraged designs with less, less exterior wall area, and permitted using less exterior land space. The cooling load refers to the rate at which heat needs to be removed from the air. Now there are many design strategies that designers can use to reduce the cooling load. One of the most important is the use of ceiling fans. They are part of the Energy Stars program for energy efficiency and in the winter can bring warm air at the ceiling down to the floor level or in, can do the reverse in the summer. There are two main types of cooling systems. The first being evaporative cooling and this works because moisture is added to the air and the relative humidity increases and we perceive the temperature to have decreased. Now, the air must be very dry for this to work. Dry, fresh air is circulated through a wet pad where it absorbs moisture as water vapor. Then sometimes fans can be included to push the air out into the space. With air conditioning, a fan will suck warm indoor air across a series of coils containing refrigerants and then blows the air back into the room. The refrigerants will absorb the heat in the evaporator and exhaust it outside. When the air cools, it also dehumidifies and the moisture condenses on the coils. The lower humidity adds to the cool that is felt. The HVAC system integrates mechanical equipment into one complex system that is designed to provide thermal comfort and air quality throughout the building. The temperature, humidity, purity, distribution, and motion of air within an interior building space are all controlled simultaneously by the HVAC system. The mechanical engineer will select the system based on performance, efficiency, uh, initial, and life costs of the system. Now there are two types of HVAC systems, central versus local. Central is the most common one used today. Central systems are located in one area of the building, thus not taking up space from other occupied areas, and can be placed near other mechanical equipment to use the energy that they release. They concentrate the noise, but do not really allow for individual control of separate spaces. Local systems will then respond more rapidly to individual room needs because they're, they can be adjusted locally, and no large central equipment area is needed. Smaller pieces of equipment can be distributed throughout the building where they are needed, but the noise could also be objectionable. The design of the HVAC system interacts with the layout of the furniture. If the lighting and placement of the grills are located uniformly, then there will be greater flexibility in the ability to arrange office space, and this will extend the building's lifespan. Large, multi-purpose buildings usually use a system of 16 zones. 
each function of the office building um, or of the building, office, retail, residential, has five zones, north, south, east, west, and central. And the 16th zone is the underground parking area. Central HVAC systems distribute the heating and cooling through what are called distribution trees. These must be coordinated with the electrical design, ceiling design, and other interior design issues. Remember, these are all running through the plenum, and we need to make sure there's enough space in there for all of these things. The trunk of the tree is the main duct or pipe that leads from the mechanical equipment to the zone. So it goes from the AC unit or the furnace to the room or to the area that you want to condition. Then the branches of the tree are the smaller ducts and pipes that then will lead to the individual spaces. A building could have one giant distribution tree or several medium-sized trees, or even sometimes many small trees. Several types of centralized systems include a direct refrigerant system, all air, all water, and air and water systems. Now designers must know where the thermostat is. The thermostat is a temperature activated switch that turns on the heating and cooling equipment to maintain the preset temperature. The mechanical engineer will determine the location of the thermostats based on the surrounding heat sources. It should be mounted on a wall that's away from windows, doors, and mechanical equipment. To save energy, clients may want to use a clock thermostat that will set the temperature back automatically each night. All right, now our final topic here is solar. Most solar systems can handle more than half of the heating load for a building. There are two types of solar systems, passive solar and active solar. Essentially, a passive solar system is the building itself. There are no moving parts and it's de it is dependent on the local site and climate conditions. Shading is a big part of a passive solar uh, cooling system or, or heating system. Now, a passive solar building should be shaded from the sun to prevent the building from being overheated in the hot weather. This decreases the cooling load and conserves energy. And of course, shading options are trees, shrubs, trellises, overhangs, shade screens, awnings, etc. A direct gain system will collect heat directly within the interior space. Service materials of the space have or should have high thermal mass, such as concrete and stone. The sun would strike directly onto the surface of the stone and warm it. For the summer cooling, ventilation should also be provided. These systems are very efficient and offer daylight views to the south. Indirect gain systems are where there's a thermal storage mass between the sun and the occupied space. Typically, the storage wall will be painted black and then covered with a sheet of glazing. The interior side of the wall should then be kept free from hangings and large furniture and things so the heat can then transfer into the space. These systems emit less daylight and offer little or no view to the south. An isolated gain design is where the solar radiation is collected and stored away from the space that's to be heated. Now active solar systems offer better control of the environment inside the building and can be added to an existing building. They don't just need to be used in new construction. The system will use pumps, fans, and other mechanical equipment to distribute and collect the energy. All right, that's all for this week in thermal comfort. Now don't forget to do your three questions and write your journal entry.